Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed, it's time to update our picks for the best 4K gaming monitors you can currently buy. The last 4K buying guide we ran was back in September of last year, so certainly due for an update given, well, I've just been testing a range of new 4K OLED monitors. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of change to the 4K gaming monitor market, and these days, if you're after a high-end display, it simply makes sense to go 4K rather than a lower resolution. Some of the best HDR monitors right now are 4K options, plus in the mid-range, 4K is now more affordable than it's ever been. So don't rule it out, even if you think you may not have enough to afford such a high resolution. In today's video, we are purely going to be talking about 4K gaming monitors, which means we are not talking about any 60Hz displays, 120Hz is the minimum. I know some people do still buy those now super cheap 4K 60Hz displays, but I'd recommend that you don't do that for gaming. I also will be mostly talking about products that I've reviewed and tested myself, so I know they are good rather than guessing or looking at the spec sheets. We have full reviews for lots of the products in the video that are well worth checking out for more in-depth testing and thoughts, plus there are links in the descriptions for all of the products. So if you want to check out the latest pricing, head down into there. But anyway, let's get started. If you're after the best overall 4K gaming monitor on the market right now, or if you're after the best 4K HDR gaming monitor, look no further than one of the very latest 32-inch 4K 240Hz OLED displays. Two new panels have hit the market in early 2024, offering WOLED or QD OLED technology, and depending on what you're after, there are lots of great choices for the best of the best. The reason why we are recommending a 4K OLED as the best right now is due to two main qualities to OLED panels that significantly enhance the gaming experience. One is their lightning fast transition times, leading to elite motion clarity that exceeds an LCD operating at the same refresh rate. And the other is their individual pixel control, which allows pixels to fully switch off to display deep, rich zero level blacks, and it means there's per pixel local dimming for brilliant HDR control at the pixel level, no backlight zones to worry about. For most people, I believe a 4K QD OLED monitor is going to be the best bet, as this panel type is offering, based on what we've tested so far, higher real-world HDR brightness, better color volume, slightly better text quality, and lower prices. The glossy screen coating does have some issues in brighter environments, but the clarity it provides is highly sought after, especially if you're not a fan of matte screens and their coating grain. Our recent 4K W OLED versus 4K QD OLED video goes into more detail on this. The best 4K QD OLED gaming monitor right now is the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDM. There isn't a ton separating the various models we've tested. Areas to performance like motion clarity, response times, and brightness are all pretty similar, but I think the performance of this ASUS monitor stacks up really well, and it has a strong feature set. In particular, the ASUS model offers an excellent, highly accurate sRGB mode that keeps settings unlocked if you need to adjust them, fantastic HDR accuracy, including strong peak brightness, and ELMB black frame insertion if you want to use it. The port selection is great, and ASUS have also promised Dolby Vision support through a future firmware update. It is one of the more expensive offerings at $1,300 US, but its higher price tag is somewhat justified given its performance. Alternatively, the MSI MPG 321URX is also worth a look, especially if you live in the United States, where it features a much cheaper $950 price tag. It gets pretty close to the ASUS variant in performance, but doesn't pack quite as many features. If you don't need any of the special features ASUS offers, it makes a lot of sense to save $350 and get the MSI variant. However, outside the US, the MSI model is a lot more expensive, often coming in around the same price as the ASUS model, in which case I'd just go for the PG32 UCDM instead. The Dell Alienware AW3225QF is also worth recommending, but only if you want a curved screen. It's the only 32-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor that uses a curved panel instead of a flat panel, which is something that some gamers prefer. I personally think a flat panel makes more sense here as it's better suited to productivity work, which is a possible use case for a 32-inch 4K monitor, and that's why I generally lean towards the ASUS and MSI models. But the performance Dell are providing is excellent, it has a good feature set including Dolby Vision support, and its price tag of $1200 US is quite attractive as it's often the cheapest model available in various regions. It's genuinely hard to go wrong here between the three QD OLEDs, and there should be something for everyone depending on your needs and desires. 
While I think the 4K 240Hz QD OLED offerings are generally the way to go for most buyers, especially those with a focus on single player HDR gaming, 4K W OLED is still worth considering in some situations. In particular, if you're a gamer that loves fast-paced competitive multiplayer titles, a 4K W OLED like the LG 32GS 95UE might be the better choice. This is due to these 32-inch W OLED panels offering a unique feature called Dual Mode, which allows them to switch between 4K 240Hz and 1080p 480Hz modes at the press of a button. The 1080p 480Hz mode has noticeably better motion clarity and lower input lag than 4K 240Hz modes, so it's a better way to play titles like Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, or Apex Legends if you don't mind the drop in resolution. And given it also supports 4K 240Hz, you can switch back to a higher resolution experience for single player or less motion sensitive titles giving you the best of both worlds, an awesome feature for those that enjoy a wide variety of games. The HDR experience here is still really good and you get many of the same OLED benefits as the QD OLEDs described earlier. The main reason why I don't recommend the LG 32GS 95U as strongly as the QD OLED pack is that it has a higher price tag of $1400 US, which isn't justified unless you specifically want the 1080p 480Hz mode. LG also didn't calibrate this monitor as well as some of the QD OLEDs, its brightness behavior isn't as good, and there aren't as many features included, no USB-C or Dolby Vision for example, and the burn-in warranty is questionable. But because of the unique dual mode feature, it's still worth considering for some buyers and is a worthy inclusion in this video. Not everyone is going to want a 32 inch 4K 240Hz OLED gaming monitor, and there's a few reasons for that. You might be concerned about burn in and don't want to risk it, even with some models offering three year warranties. You might want the better text clarity of an LCD, or you might desire higher levels of brightness. The pricing of these OLED monitors might also be out of reach, especially if the lower cost MSI variant isn't all that cheap where you live. If you fall into one of these categories, a 4K HDR LCD gaming monitor might be better. My recommendation in this category hasn't changed since the last video. I would go with the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7 in its 32 inch size. It's a 32 inch 4K 165Hz gaming display using VA LCD technology and with the 1196 zone full array local dimming backlight. Thanks to this backlight and the use of high contrast VA tech, the Neo G7 offers a true HDR experience that I think gets the closest to OLED of any LCD monitor that I've tested so far. It doesn't quite match OLED for its richness, shadow detail, and viewing angles, but there's no doubting the HDR experience here is impressive. The Neo G7 is one of the fastest LCD monitors I've tested in terms of response times, and while motion clarity isn't as good as OLED displays, it still offers a strong gaming experience, especially at 4K. The HDR experience is very good as well. The combination of a high zone count backlight and great native contrast leads to minimal blooming in HDR content while retaining the punch you should get from these displays. Peak brightness exceeds 1200 nits, and overall this display is somewhat brighter than you'll get from an OLED, though not especially bright. Being a more traditional gaming display, the Neo G7 has a few other advantages up its sleeve. The use of VA LCD tech means there's no risk of burn-in, and it has a normal sub-pixel structure which plays nicely with desktop apps and text. And of course, the size is really nice for desktop use, 32 inches with this sort of resolution is fantastic. There are some drawbacks though, the 1000R curvature is very aggressive and adds nothing to the experience, so while the display is better suited to desktop use, I don't think it's all that versatile as a productivity or creator monitor. Input latency with dimming enabled is unimpressive, and weak viewing angles also require you to view the display dead on to get the best HDR experience. But these flaws are more on the minor end of the scale and shouldn't take away from what is otherwise a great HDR gaming experience. One aspect that works in favor of the Neo G7 is its current price tag. You can regularly find it down around $800 US, which is around 30% cheaper than a typical 4K OLED. However, its MSRP of $1,300 is ridiculous in 2024, so I absolutely would not buy it at that price, only for $800 or thereabouts. Also, I would recommend avoiding the higher refresh rate Neo G8 model due to a few issues I mentioned in my review. The Neo G7 is where it's at. In the past few months, I have tested some other 4K HDR LCD options at lower price points, like the Acer Nitro XV275KP3, which offers a 27-inch IPS panel and 576 zone local dimming. I just haven't been quite impressed enough with them to get a recommendation at this point. 
If you're after a regular 4K gaming monitor that doesn't support true HDR functionality, they're actually quite affordable these days compared to just a few years ago. 4K SDR gaming displays are comfortably in the mid-range right now, and I absolutely would not pay more than about $500 US for one at a 27-inch panel size. Over the last couple of years, the standout choice in this category has varied, and typically what you'll get is pretty similar between the best models. I would have my eyes on the MSI MAG274 UPF, the LG 27GR93U, and both the Gigabyte M27U and M28U, which depending on pricing in your region could be the best choice. All four of these monitors offer similar specifications and perform reasonably well, with none being a clear standout in terms of performance or features. The cheapest model at the moment is the MSI MAG274 UPF at around $400 US, providing a 27-inch 4K 144Hz IPS LCD gaming display with features like HDMI 2.1 and Adaptive Sync, though no real HDR hardware. $400 is pretty much as good as it gets right now for that sort of hardware, however this monitor could have been better tuned, which is probably why it has received a heavy discount. Response times aren't disastrous, but are not a standout of this product, and you need to be comfortable not receiving the fastest option to justify buying one. I'm only mentioning it here due to the low price. Typically, I think you can get something a bit better for just $50 more. The other main choices usually sit in the $450 to $500 range, and I would lean towards the Gigabyte M27U here, especially if you can get one at $450 US. This is a 27-inch 4K 160Hz IPS LCD that offers an excellent balance across all areas to performance, from response time speed to color quality. Motion performance is similar to that of other modern IPS LCDs, and the panel is decently well optimized for variable refresh rate gamers, no glaring flaws here. We're looking at a wide gamut experience, great brightness, reasonable factory calibration, and of course the excellent resolution of a 4K panel that's well suited to productivity work as well as gaming. There are no areas to performance that especially stand out, but no deal breaker flaws either. The M28U is similar in price and is a little better tuned for high refresh rate gaming around the 120 to 144 Hz range. It has superior factory calibration, especially the sRGB mode, and a somewhat higher contrast ratio. The M27U is much brighter, consumes less power, has a slightly higher refresh rate, and is a little better tuned for variable refresh gaming. Overall, there's not much in it, and both are great value choices. The LG 27GR93U is the most premium of the four monitors I've mentioned, most often priced at $500 US. It is also a slightly better product, with the price increase over the Gigabyte monitors being fair. Many areas to performance are roughly the same, but if you go LG, you'll end up with some feature additions like hardware calibration support and slightly better response time tuning. Six months ago, the 27GR93U was hard to recommend due to a bizarrely high price tag in some regions like the US, but these days that's been fixed and around $500 sounds right to me. Now I have mentioned four options here, so I haven't exactly made a definitive call on the best 27-inch 4K SDR gaming monitor, but that's because it really does come down to pricing and availability in your region. Everything being equal, I would go with the 27GR93U, but it wouldn't take much of a discount for me to consider the Gigabyte M27U instead. There's lots of competition here, and most monitors offer a nice, balanced 4K experience. If you're after a 4K SDR gaming monitor but think 27 or 28 inches is a bit too small, well luckily there are 32 inch models available. These days the 32 inch 4K market has improved a bit compared to previous years where the quality of 32 inch panels was a noticeable downgrade relative to 27 inch panels. That's no longer the case, although upgrading in size still comes with a reasonable price premium. Right now, there are several options worth considering in this category, the leading candidate being the LG 32GR93U, a 32-inch 4K 144Hz IPS LCD. Over the last few months, the price has dropped from a rather hefty $800 US to just $600, making it a much more attractive value proposition, especially since the release of new 4K OLEDs at the high end. The 32GR93U performs well across a range of different areas, it delivers good response times, and LG have tuned it well to offer a single overdrive mode experience. It's not the fastest product going around at 144Hz, but it's optimized to avoid inverse ghosting artifacts. 
Among 32-inch LCD monitors, this is one of the best displays I've seen in that area, which is especially important as older 32-inch models from a few years ago weren't very impressive in terms of motion quality. This is complemented by great factory color tuning, an excellent sRGB mode, hardware calibration support, strong DCI-P3 color space coverage, and good brightness. It offers fantastic versatility for those that want to game and use the nice large 32-inch 4K panel for productivity work. It's a really nice dual-use monitor. The main drawback here is that you aren't getting any real HDR hardware capabilities, but this isn't as much of a concern at its new $600 price point. With LG going much harder on price, two of the monitors I've previously recommended are now a bit more difficult to justify. The Lenovo Legion Y32P30 is still a great product, but at $670 US the value isn't there as it's not quite as well tuned or calibrated as the LG model. The Gigabyte M32U was also a good bang for buck product, but its price is pretty consistently sat between $600 and $650 over the last six months. With the 32GR93U now undercutting it and typically offering better performance, it no longer holds the value crown. Basically what I'm saying here is get the LG 32GR93U if you want a 32-inch 4K SDR gaming monitor. It's one of the better options that I've reviewed in terms of performance, and now the price is excellent, and that's what I love to see. So that's it for this 4K gaming monitor recommendation video. Lots of great options on the market right now. Prices have become much cheaper for 4K SDR panels, and we now have new OLED options at the high end for stunning HDR gaming. There's never been a better time to enter the 4K gaming ecosystem, and with more options set for release throughout 2024, it's only going to get better. As always, if you do want to learn more about the monitors I've been talking about in this video, I have individual reviews available right here on Monitors Unbox for most of them. I'd also recommend checking the links in the description for updated pricing information as this does change over time. So check down there if you're watching this video weeks or months after it went live. Also, if you do want to support Monitors Unboxed and Hardware Unboxed and all the testing that goes into making these recommendation videos, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplan. Your support goes to buying some of the monitors that we have tested for these sorts of videos, and you also gain some cool benefits in return, like our Discord community, which is a great place to get monitor recommendations. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.